to a, 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 the, 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 the place where I feel like God is directing me in it. The message about the belief and doing you believe and what you believe and how you believe it. There are many things that we believe in. Uh, to some, we believe in Santa Claus. We believe in the Tooth Fairy. We believe in so many things. And we teach our children to believe in the, these things, uh, that, that the Easter Bunny and all these other things. We'll teach them to believe in, in these secular things, but we don't teach them to believe in God. We, we talk about God. We talk about faith. We talk about the belief that we have. But we do. We walk that walk. So that they see what we believe. I want to take just a few minutes. I, I, this section of scripture. Of what does it mean to believe? Uh, it says uh, it is to accept or to hold on to something as true. Genuine or something you are sure of. If you're taking notes you might want to write these definitions down. It says to hold on to an opinion or think that something is true. Or is supposed to be. Believing is faith put in action. Now, I'm going to preach that message about faith being put into action and believing is that faith being put into action. You see, we can say we have faith in God, but do you believe that God can do what you ask Him for? Amen. Do you believe it when you pray? Amen. And do you live the life that represents the fact that you believe it? Before we get into this too much, I'm just going to tell you something. This may be contradictory to some of your theology. It may be contradictory to some of the things that you have felt in your life. But I'm going to tell you something. The defining point that we need to understand is understanding faith is one thing that we have. But to believe what we say is how we must live. Amen. And I want to share this with you. We must believe. The Bible says believing is that we are saved by the way that we believe. Amen? The reason that so many people wonder before they get outside of the church after they pray on the altar and repent and give their heart to Christ and they give their heart to the Lord. The, the, one of the things that they struggle with is the enemy begins to create doubt and questions and disbelief sets into their heart. Did I really get saved? Did anything really change? Did Jesus really come into my heart? The enemy jumps on you before you even get to your car in the parking lot. You begin to create doubt. Questions. Did anything change? Problems begin to come up. And circumstances, the next thing you know, you push it aside and say, I don't know if I really got anything that day. But the Bible tells us if you want to be saved, you must believe. Look what it says in Scripture. The Bible tells us. It said in Acts the 16th chapter, verse 31, Paul was teaching the, the Philippian jailer. He says, uh, so they, they said, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved, you and your household. He was saying that if you want to be saved, if you want your family to be saved, if you want them to be saved, you must learn to believe. Amen. What it means to believe. Go ahead. Amen. The Bible tells us in that, in that definition of what it means to be saved in Romans 10, 9, and 10. We talk about it when we lead, teach people how to lead someone to Christ. It says, if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart one believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made known unto salvation. But that simply, this point is this. Believing is what makes you saved. Do you believe that you are saved? Do you believe it? The question is asked a lot of times when you're leading someone and you're doing soul winning and sometimes you, you've been taught this. You ask the question, if you were to die tonight, do you know that you go to heaven? And if, you, and if there's a question in your mind, if there's a thought in your mind that runs through that mind and you wonder, well, I don't know. Then my question to you is, do you really believe that you are saved? Are, are, are you questioning the fact of God's ability to save you? Or you're surrendering to Him? Or the confession of it? See, the Bible says that the confession of our mouth, uh, that confession is not the confession of telling someone, a priest or a, or, or a pastor or anyone else. You don't even have to tell God all that you've done wrong. Believe it or not, God knows everything you've done. Amen. You know that? You don't, you don't have to tell God that, that you, you were the one who made the mess in the kitchen. 
You don't have to be the one to, to, to you, you, you got to understand, confession is not telling God what you've done wrong. Confession is believing it and making it known. Amen. Right. Amen. Amen. If you're saved and you know it. Amen. Sometimes you've got to realize if you're saved and, and you believe it, you are saved. There's nobody in, in this world that's going to tell you if you were to die tonight, you wouldn't go to heaven. Because you know and you believe that you are saved. Yep. Now, Pastor, now wait a minute. Now, I'm not perfect. Believe it or not, there's not one thing in that scripture that says that you have to be perfect to be saved. Is it? Now I'm just asking you, you tell me, is it? No. Is, is there anything in that scripture that says you have to be perfect? No. No, what it says is you have to believe. You have to believe. You have to believe. And the confession is that you believe that Jesus Christ forgave you of your sins and your sins are forgiven and you are bought by the blood of Jesus Christ and you're bound for heaven. If you know it, give the Lord a hand clap. Praise We spend our time telling God all the problems of why we aren't saved. But the devil will rebuke us and tell us because you've fallen, because you've made mistakes, because you you failed, that you begin to fall apart. And that is where your believing shatters. But I'm here to tell you that when you believe, God moves on what you believe. Amen. Faith and believing seem to go simultaneously in Scripture. In a lot of Scripture places that you'll find faith and believing in a similar category. But the emphasis is a lot of times on the faith beginning, but believing sets faith in motion. Look at what the, the, the very point of Scripture that I want to refer to is in, in Hebrews, the 11th chapter, and verse 6. It says, without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he who comes to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that, who diligently seek him. If we look at that Scripture, we realize the fact that faith is simply the tool that creates the opportunity for us to believe that we are saved. That we believe that God is doing what we are asking Him to do. Believing is putting faith in motion. The Bible tells us the very definition of faith is the faith is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. You see that is when we have faith we believe. When we have faith we see. We don't believe for us to maintain the sickness or God to help us to get through the sickness. We believe for healing. Amen. You see, faith not only in believing for salvation is the same believing that takes when we ask God to move a mountain in our life or change the circumstances in our life or create the miracles that we need. It happens because we believe. When we think about the idea of believing on the Lord Jesus Christ, we begin to realize it. Hebrews 11 and 1 says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. The very idea of faith is what we hope to see. But believing is the transition from faith to accepting the will of God in the moment that we pray. Amen. Not preaching about the name it and claim it, blab it and grab it. I'm not talking about the denial of sickness. I am talking about the fact that we know that God can heal. And when we pray, we have faith to know that He can. And we believe because He will. Amen. I'm going to go to a couple of scriptures right now. Brother Farr always tells me, he said, just stay with the word, you won't get into trouble. I'm going to stay with the Word today, so if you have your Bible, stay with me. The Bible tells us in John, the 20th chapter, verse 25, about the idea of the disciples and when they had come to the very death of Jesus Christ. Thomas was there with the rest of the disciples, and he began to ponder the idea of whether Jesus was really been resurrected from the dead because they had told him that they had seen him and that he had been resurrected and the tomb was empty, and he begins to doubt he has a little bit of disbelief. I'm sure none of you have ever disbelieved anything. 
You ever doubted anything? Are you still there? Turn to that person, give them a big pinch, and make sure they're still awake with me. Amen. Thomas was like that today. He didn't really understand. He couldn't really grasp the idea that Jesus was, he saw him crucified. He saw him die. He saw him put in the tomb. And he was still pondering the idea, could this really be? John, the 20th chapter, and verse 25, says this. The other disciples, therefore, said to him, we have seen the Lord. And he said to them, unless I see his hand in the print of, of, of the nails. And I put my fingers into the nails. And I put my hands into his side. I will not believe. After eight days, his disciples were again inside. Thomas was with them. And Jesus came. Uh, Jesus came, the door being shut, and stood in the midst and, and said, Peace be to you. And then he said to Thomas, Notice he went right to Thomas. And he said, Reach your finger here and look at my hands. And reach your hands here and he put it into his side. Do not be unbelieving, but believing. That's what Jesus said to Thomas. Do not be unbelieving. But be believing. Now, I, I want to go just a little bit farther. And, and Thomas answered and said to him, My Lord and my God. And Jesus said to him, Thomas, because you have seen me, you have believed. Notice this last line here. It says, Blessed are those who have not seen and yet believe. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet they believe. Now, some that, uh, I realize what he's talking about there, and part of it is, is the fact that he's talking about the faith that we have in Jesus Christ. And some people say, I'll follow Jesus as long as I can see him. If you can show me a real Jesus, a tangible Jesus, I'll believe in Jesus. But I'm going to tell you something. I don't want Jesus standing right here by me. Martin, he's pretty busy right now. He's preparing a place for me in heaven. Amen. And then when I die, he'll, I'll be there with him. Amen. I don't know about you, but I'm glad Jesus went to heaven. Amen. I'm glad he's there for me. Amen. And I'm glad that one day I'll be with him right there in heaven. Amen. That's what I'm looking for. Jesus, my Savior, my God, died. Yes, he died. He was put into a tomb. But he's alive and he lives forevermore. And he's at the right hand of the Father. For my needs. When I look at the idea of believing, he said, Blessed are those. Thomas said, Lord, I believe the minute that he touched him. Let me tell you something. If you've been touched today, if, you, if you've been healed, you've seen God do miracles in your life, would you just lift your hands up right now? You see right there, you what you've done is you've put your hands in the nails of his hands. You, you, you've put them, you've touched his side. You, you've put your hand in the hole of his side. You've been there and you've seen that. So what you have done, you, are, you, you have seen him and you have realized the fact that he is there. And you've realized the miracle that he can do. And so your faith is amplified to believe even more. Amen. Thomas, the transition happened completely with the minute That old song comes to my mind very far. He touched me. Oh, he touched me. And oh, the joy that floods my soul. Something happened. And now I know he touched me. And he made. Did you hear what you just said? And he made me whole. Don, help me sing that again. He touched me. Oh, he touched me. And oh, the joy that floods my soul. Something happened. And now I know he touched me. And he made me. You couldn't figure out how God did it, but you asked him and he did it. And now you know, now you know, now you know, now you believe. But the minute that another circumstance comes up, the moment that that circumstance comes up, Satan begins to create doubt and disbelief. Yeah. He begins to create that disbelief. And the question 
benchmark arises again, can God do it? Like he did it before. Our belief becomes shattered and entangled with doubt. And when that oftentimes happens, we must realize, because Thomas was speaking to us and saying that the very message that many of us have been through is, do we believe? In Mark, another section of Scripture in Mark, the ninth chapter, verses 14 through 27. I, I won't read all this section of Scripture, but I want you to know that, that the Father brings His Son to Jesus and His disciples for a healing of His Son from seizures and, 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 and the things that were, that were occurring with His Son, and He didn't know what else to do. So He, he came to Jesus' disciples, and they could not do anything with Him. They could not. They prayed for Him, and they did not, were not able to deliver Him. The boy comes to Jesus, his father brings to him and begins to talk to Jesus. And Jesus then begins to, to see the boy literally come to the place to where the seizure begins to throw him down to the ground, begins to convulse his foaming at the mouth, if you will. And all of these things begin to happen. And Jesus speaks some words in 9th chapter, verse 23, and he says, Jesus said to him, if you can believe, all things are possible to those who believe. There's a little bitty word. Let me get on this chair because I'm so short. Sure. But I don't know if you're seeing that. But you see that word right there? Yeah. You see that little? Can you see that word right there? Yeah. I, I don't know. James, I'm not going to step on your guitar case. Man. Here's, here's what I'm going to tell you something. Whatever you have need of today, it's all possible if you believe it.
Jesus. The Bible tells us that Jesus, uh, the boy was healed and, and he brought him to his father. And I want you to look at this. Go ahead. Bring that extra up. And, and then they went to his disciples. The disciples were pretty upset because they, they, didn't, they didn't get that rally to see it happen. They didn't get that. And, and, and Jesus told them, he said, when they had come privately, the disciples asked him and said, why could we not cast it out? Go ahead, and it says, and Jesus said, and this guy can only come by nothing but prayer and fasting. Let me share this with you. If you want to amplify your believing, start praying and fasting over what you're asking God for. Now, I'm going to share this with you. If you're asking God for a new car and you're fasting for it, you may starve to death. Because you're being a spoiled brat instead of believing that your father can give you what you need. Amen? Amen. Amen. Here's, here's the difference between, here's fasting to get something, and here's fasting to surrender something. There's a big difference. When I fast, I want to get closer to God. I want to get more in his presence. I want to get more of him in me. But when I'm fasting to get something out of God, when I want to get my way, and I think, listen, I'm gonna, I'm gonna stand right here, and I'm just gonna stand. I'm gonna. I, we had one girl that was in our, our foster care, and my wife and I, we, we both were scared to death. And Phil, she was, she would do this. She would, she, she didn't get her way. She would get mad, and she would hold her breath. Mm. And that didn't work because I knew eventually she was gonna breathe. <laughs> So she got mad, and because it didn't seem to get the trigger, she would take her and she would beat her head on the ground until she would get her way. Because we would always say, oh, no, she's going to knock herself out. She's going she's gonna to have a concussion. And, and I, she might have. I don't know. But, but I got scared, and we, we took her to the doctor because we were afraid that CPS was going to say, you're abusing this child. You're beating her. And so we took her to the doctor and said, she, every time she gets, doesn't get her way, she beats her head on the floor and said, she'll either knock herself out or she'll quit. The doctor told us that. He said, but if you give in, she'll keep doing it. You know what some of us do is we want, we're just like that child. We want our way so bad that we will hurt ourselves, we will punish ourselves, we will go to the extremes that we can so we can get our way with God. And God says, I love you so much. All you have to do is believe that I have already given you what you have need of. All you have to do is have faith to believe it, that you can receive it. Amen. You don't have to do all that stuff. Now, the difference is, is that when they begin to fast, if you believe and you begin to get the word in your spirit and you begin to pray and you fast at the same time and you pray to get closer to God, you are going to have more of belief in God. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Remember, it took John walked with Jesus. John, the beloved, was the one who supposedly laid his head on the Passover meal on Jesus' chest. It's the one that stood by Jesus' mother. It's the one who was close to him. The Bible says that he's beloved. And, and he was the one who said, listen, I don't believe him. Thomas was there. Thomas didn't believe him until he touched him. Amen. And it's not until we get into his presence that we truly begin to believe all things are possible. Now, I'm going to go on because i got a lot of scripture to say. Go ahead, Dave. James, the, the, one of my... And I tell, I tell you this all the time, one of my favorite sections of Scripture reading is the book of James. As I was reading through James, God brought something to my attention. This will twist a little bit more of what you believe and what you've been taught. But as you read in James, the second chapter, verses 17 to, to, through 23, and you read this chapter, you will notice that there is an intriguing point that, that, that begin to become curious to me. And I begin to read it, and the more I read it, it talks about the, the idea of Believing and, and, and works being so similar. And, and, and this section of scripture says, and, and thus also faith by itself, if it does not have works, is dead. Now, I realize that right before this, Jesus, or, I mean, Paul was, I mean, I'll go back again. James was teaching, and he was writing down here and teaching them about reaching out to the needy. And he was reaching out to the needy and he was talking to them about if you see someone in need, don't just, just say, well, I'm going to pray for you. Do something about it. And I'm not taking away from that motion because I believe that it takes work. But I also believe if you'll interchange the words up there where the word says works 
Now you can look at this in the original writings and it can very well be changed to this. If you will change the words to believe or believing in those situations, you will see how that God wants us to believe to encourage our faith. Let us read together. It says, thus also faith by itself, if it does not have believing, it is dead. But if someone will say, you have faith and I have believing, show me your faith without your believing and I will show you your faith by my believing. He says, if you believe that there is one God, you do well. Even the demons believe and tremble. Now that section of scripture right there is this. When he said that scripture, it goes back to my original text in John the 14th chapter. Because what so many people do is they, their, their believing is based in their religion. You believe that there is one God. He was talking to a group of Jews who had practiced this and, and understood this. But they had been a form of religion. And some of us, our, our believing is wound up in our religion. And it's not determined by our relationship. God wants us to have that relationship with Him. He goes, but uh, you do well, even the demons believe. Even the, do you believe them? No. Larry, do you, do you, I, I want to get some of these expert opinions. Do you believe that the demons believe it in Jesus Christ? Sure they do. Sure they do believe. They believe in Jesus. They, they even, they confessed him. And, and, and the encounters, they recognized him. They knew who he was. They, they realized who he was. And they realized how he was. They believed. They recognized the authority of who he was. And the message is very clear. He goes on and he says, But you do not, you, you do not want to know, O oh foolish man, that faith without believing is dead. Was not Abraham your father justified by works when he offered Isaac, his son, on the altar? Do you see that faith was working together with his believing? And by believing... Faith was made perfect. Did, did you, are you getting this? Well, this is some good teaching. I hope you're chewing on this good. It says that the scripture was fulfilled, which says Abraham believed God and it was accounted to him for righteousness. And he was called the friend of God because he believed. The only one doubting on the pathway up this mountain was not Abraham. He believed God could supply. But I imagine Isaac had some second thoughts carrying the fire, carrying the wood. Began to wonder, Father, what are you going to do about a sacrifice? He said, God will supply. I'm going to tell you something every step of the way this morning. You need to understand God will provide. God will make a way. God can heal. God can deliver. God can set free. God can do what you ask him to do. Mark the ninth chapter. When they bring the son up, they begin to talk about that. A very powerful passage of scripture. It turns our heads to wonder, do we believe enough to see God do it? It is based on the fact that God can do it, and we believe that he will do it. Trust, believe, comes to the level of faith. I have faith that God can move mountains, but do you believe that he will? I have faith to believe that God can heal, but do you believe that he will? This morning I'm asking you this question, do you believe God will? When we look at that, we begin to realize that God can do what he said he would do. We must believe to be saved. We must believe to receive. I ask you this question, do you believe? I believe this morning that God can do a miracle. Yeah. Anybody in this place need a miracle? You need a miracle. I'm just going to ask you this question. I just have a little need. Mine's just a little need. But do you need a miracle? Do you need some, God to do something that you need that cannot be done? I need I need God to do a miracle. Now, if, if, I, if, I, if I've missed it this morning, I understand that. But I believe there are people in this congregation right now that you need a miracle from God. And I'm going to ask you, do you believe God to do it? Do you believe God to do it? Are you going to continue to go down that path? 
having faith, yeah. but never truly believing. And I'm going to ask Roberto if you come to the piano right now as he plays. I'm going to ask you to do this. If you have and you need a miracle, both in your life or maybe in your family, maybe you have someone that you want to stand in for a miracle today, and you know that they need a miracle. I'm asking you that question. Do you believe God can do what he said he would do? 